Earlier this afternoon, we had a little thing called Yookapalooza. And while we haven't brought any of the ukuleles on stage, we brought... That was intentional. Yeah, was it? Yeah, yeah. Were people scared? Oh, and then the second we were scared. <laughs> We've brought Bill DeRouche and Christian Crumlish up, and they were the first act to go on. Um, yeah, that was something. <laughs> <laughs> it was something, It was yeah. something. It was definitely something. That's, that's very accurate. It was, uh, it was kind of a funny thing to do. It was fun. Oh, good, I'm glad, I'm it glad you It was fun, it was good lunchtime entertainment. Good. It kept everybody awake. That's beautiful. You guys seem to have fun with it. it yeah. It's fun to do. It's good to get up and just, you know, ham it up. We really only get to play together at, at conferences. <laughs> I, I live in the Bay Area. And, uh, yeah, and I live here, so we never get to play together except, you know, at random conferences. All right, so let's, let's first of all, let's locate you guys on the web and on Twitter, please. Right, so uh, on Twitter, I'm Media Junkie, and my website is MediaJunkie.com. Mm -hmm. And on Twitter, I'm Builder, B-I-L-D-E-R, not as in building things. And my personal site is uh, <laughs> uh -oh. PushClickTouch.com. A little dusty, but yeah, there, it's, it's there. I think about that one for a minute. It's because it's dusty, yes. <laughs> So when you got so, how did this get together? Then how did you guys? I'll ask you each individually to answer, and then we'll we'll smush it together. How okay. did you start playing the ukulele? Um, Granted, this is not what they do for their day jobs, ladies and gentlemen. Oh God, no! This is just be, their little fun thing that they do. I'd be living out of cardboard if yeah. it was my day job. I don't know. Could you afford cardboard on a ukulele salary? <laughs> if you save up. All right. If you save up. Yeah. So how um, did you start playing? I started playing. I had tried random instruments over the years, mm -hmm. never since you know college, more or less, and nothing uh -huh. really stuck. And then, actually, my mother-in-law bought me really like a novelty level ukulele, you know, from Hawaii one trip, and it stuck with me. And then I bought one that you know would stay in tune, and mm -hmm. then just kind of got hooked. Um, just got hooked because it's a very, it's a low barrier instrument. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It, you can make a song without too much effort. Mm -hmm. And I like having more fingers than strings. <laughs> I feel like I'm more in control. You feel like you've got something to do. Okay. Yeah. Christian, how did you start playing? Well, um, I think I was having kind of an early midlife crisis in my late 30s, mm -hmm. and I, um, I sort of became aware that I had harbored a, a secret desire to play music all my life, mm -hmm. but I had really never tried. I had piano lessons and a little bit of that kind of stuff, uh, and I had a guitar in my closet that I didn't really play. Um, but I think I, it, it sort of dawned on me that I really love music. I wanted to actually make it and not just listen to it. Mm -hmm. And that I was afraid of not being any good, mm -hmm. you know. And oh, it's too late to start. I just you know, wanted to that, enjoy something, right? Yeah. And and and, and, so, and so I kind of had some sort of something snapped, and I said, "Who cares if I'm no good? Like, that's no reason not to do it. Um, it's not about becoming, you know, a virtuoso necessarily. I just want to do it in some small way." Mm -hmm. And um, I had had a ukulele growing up that I didn't really play. I just sort of, you know tapped on it, and it was my mom's old ukulele, actually, from the, the 1950s ukulele craze, because mm -hmm. they come back every 20, 30 years or yeah. something like that. Just like bell bottoms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't keep them down. So I picked up my uke, and I, I started playing it, and, and, um, and I realized that it, it, was, it was inviting me to play, you know, mm -hmm. and, and teaching me what to do, and I'm, I'm still pretty mediocre, I think, but I love it. It's really fun, and I've just sort of gotten more and more engaged with it over time. And how did you guys come to play together? I think, well, I mean, we knew each other, you know, through the various online internets and had an affinity. We both somehow discovered that we both play. I don't even remember how that conversation is that, is started. Is that something that you put in a bio? And I play the ukulele. Well, now, yeah. It might be, I mean, I think we probably talked about it. Probably, I would guess, because I don't remember either, but it would probably be something like on Twitter, we would say, practicing my, just learned a new song on the uke. Or, yeah. or hey, this is a Neil Young song is really easy to play on the uke, or something yeah. like mm -hmm. that. Um, I, I have like a Twitter list of ukulele people, uh, but uh, this yes. is all before that. Um, and so I think it just probably came up in conversation, mm -hmm. you know. But then over time, I mean, we see each other at, you know, random conferences, you know, around the country. And we just started almost developing this tradition of if we were going to the same conference, we would both pack our ukulele. And even just squeeze in a couple hours somewhere in a random hotel room, uh -huh. you know, or somebody's house, and just like, I mean, actually be able to be in the same place and just noodle out some crappy song, some less cruddy song, um, you know. Some beautiful, beautiful piece of music. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and just, just noodle away, and just like, have fun with it. And mm -hmm. then finally it's like, all right, let's actually get some set list going. 
And I think I think our taste is pretty compatible. Yes. We're both sort of like aging ex punks, and uh, you know. Um, <laughs> Not X. Yeah, and not aging either. But um, correct. Right. Um, I mean, uh, you know, we we both love the Minutemen and uh, um, a lot of the sort of post-punk hardcore bands. Yeah. And I'm an unreconstructed hippie as well. And so, Ditto. Uh, punk hippie, you know, huh? yeah. And, and, and yeah. so, so I'm, I believe in synthesizing those things. I think that dichotomy is is a it's 1970s. The, it's the footwear problem. that gets me with the punk yeah. and the hippie. It's the footwear is where I get confused. That's true. That's true. Punk hippie. It's in here. Yeah. The I thing just... to remember is that punk happened in the late 70s, mm -hmm. and it was so long ago compared to, say, the difference between the 60s and the 70s that right. punk and hippie are kind of the same thing now. No, I, They're both um, way back there. You know, in, 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 in the way of time, yes. Yes. So many other things, no. Well, I agree and the that... Footwear, the footwear, the yes, yes. steel-toed boots no. versus Birkenstocks. I won't deny yeah. that punk was a rejection of, of, of the hippie ethos. Yes. That's right. totally true. But, you know, it's a dialectic, and over time you synthesize these things. Okay. They're both just different forms of, I'm going to do it my way, damn it. Yeah, and, and I'm, I actually yeah. strongly believe that the ukulele is a, is a great punk instrument. Right. In that sense of the DIY, you know, it's not about uh, going to, uh, you know, um, uh, Juilliard or, or, or having right. an orchestra in your band or being the Eagles the, or the playing an arena. Because the best punk bands started off in their garages yeah. and most yeah. of exactly. my favorite recordings were recorded not right. in, like, you know, overproduced sound studio, right. but in someone's basement, in yeah. someone's garage. It's, it's raw. Right. It's about doing it, not, not waiting to do it till you're perfect right. or something right. like that. It's about doing it because you love yeah. to. And I used to, yeah. my, my first ukulele, I would record stuff um, and bring it into GarageBand and then fuzz it up, you know, mm -hmm. put reverb and distortion on it. And then every little mistake was just lost in kind of the, the right. noise. And, yeah, and it would completely sound like early Sex Pistols or something like right. that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Ramones are the classic example of that. Just do it. Uh -huh. Just break it down, three chords, mm -hmm. just have some fun, make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. So how long have you guys been playing together? Together? Yes, and um, then separately. I think off and on, I mean, a year and a half, but over that time, it's probably three times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we didn't rehearse this set list until Tuesday. Yeah. Well, you just got back, and you're yes. not you're not a Portlander. Right. Leader. Oakland. Yeah. So we discussed it. We we've even sent each other recordings of stuff we've done to encourage each other to learn. Yeah. Here, mm -hmm. learn this song. We'll play mm -hmm. it together eventually, right. or or even overdub something. Here's here's some right. rhythm. Why don't you play yeah. something on top of it? Um, but yeah, it's been about a year or so, but so episodic that it's as if we've had maybe only about a couple days of woodshedding, you know, so far. Yeah, if that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad that uh, Brad brought you guys up here to play. I thought that was fun. Was I thought fun, that was a yeah. nice addition. It's a wonderful addition to a conference. It's fun to like, just shake things up, put a little bit of music in there. Yeah, definitely. So why not? Definitely. Well, thank you guys both so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having us. Thank you, Cammie. It was good to talk to you. Great. We're going to leave now and let you guys have, you know, other content. Yeah. Peace out. Bye. Thank you.